Here's a very rare and very interesting radio. This is the Aeromarine Electronics model RDF number 101. I have never seen another one of these and it seems there's no information out there on this set. Uh, this came up on eBay with a very low buy it now and I jumped on that without hesitation. Those of you who collect uh, American transistor radios specifically may recognize what this set is derived from. The uh, Miller Transistol, itself a fairly rare radio and one uh, that I don't have in my collection. This set was made probably uh, 1959 or so. Some of the date codes are 57 but the uh, most recent one is is a uh, 59. The Miller Transistol was sold as a kit. I don't know what the uh, story was with this model. You can see that the tunable range of this radio is pretty unusual. It's marked from 285 up to 1100 kilohertz. Um, this radio has an IF frequency of 455 as far as I can tell. So you can tune to its own IF frequency which causes squealing. Um, this range here lets it cover both the long wave band and part of the middle wave band. Unfortunately around here a lot of the stations are in the high part of the band so uh, there isn't too much to receive and there are no beacons in this area. I'm going to first demonstrate this radio and then I'll show you the uh, unusual insides. There's only two controls which is uh, unusual for a radio direction finder and it makes it not work very well at that purpose. This is a combination RF gain and volume control and uh, you gotta turn it all the way up pretty much to start hearing stuff. You can kind of get a null, so it does uh, sort of work for that purpose. It's a Quebec station, it sounds like. It's got this uh, milliamp meter here. You can see it goes crazy around the IF frequency. The behavior of the gain control here is kind of wonky because it's both an RF gain control and the volume control. They probably should have separated that out into two separate, you know, controls. So you see that you can pick up a decent number of stations, especially for a uh, four transistor radio, but the performance definitely leaves something to be desired. There's tons of squealing and uh, other weird noise, and it's prone to overload on local stations, specifically AM680. I have recapped this chassis uh, in the hopes of improving its uh, performance, but 
not much of an improvement was really noted. It maybe sounds a little better, that's about it. I did restuff the original caps because this is a quite rare radio. The only one that's really super obvious on, or at least fairly obvious, is uh, this one here. I basically just, you know, put a new cap in there and then filled the ends with hot glue. Or at least I did on that one. The other ones I left unfilled because uh, you can't really see into them so easily. You can see three of the transistors. These three are all in sockets. Uh, they're all Raytheon transistors. Most of them have date codes in 1957. This one here has a date code in 1959, the 22nd week of 1959. Uh, it's a Raytheon 2N483. And I believe this is the one transistor that the normal Miller transistor does not have. So that's an added socket there. You can see this control is a you know, double layer one there with a switch. And you can see that one of the connections from the antenna goes right to it. Uh, I added this extension here because this wire was a little too short and it kept getting caught in the uh, you know, tuning capacitor there. So you basically just shunts uh, that connection to ground depending on where the position of the control is. And then the bottom section is just the volume control. Uh, that one little gold wire there is one of the legs of the audio output transistor. It's on the other side of the board. This is a milliamp meter here. It was made in Japan. It's got a little hand numbered serial number in there. Kind of unusual. It runs off of 9 volts. I don't know what the original battery holder uh, was on this thing. There was just two you know, cut off wires in here when I got it. You can see that four extra holes were drilled in the plastic case. I don't know what the story is there. On the back cover here, there's two connections. Um, I believe for an antenna and ground. You can see that uh, the back here is actually for a Miller crystal tuner, hence these notes here. They just turned it around and drilled those holes there. Not sure if those were a later owner mod or the way it shipped, but um, all in all, this is a pretty odd set. I'm not sure if this is a prototype or if there's something that was actually sold, but there seems to be really no remaining records of this set. Maybe someone out there knows about it, but John tried pretty hard to uh, find out some information on this, and it's, it's not been easy. Um, John on the Antic Radio forums, that is. Mainly doing this video for him, but I'm sure you guys are interested in this as well. Uh, yeah, this is just an, a real oddball. I guess a footnote in the history of American transistor radios. It's got these suction cups in the bottom here. Forgot to mention that. They've kind of gotten hard with age and these two are flattened out. Alright, well, that's about all there is to say about this set. So, thanks for watching. And if you know anything about it, uh, let me know. Because I'm really curious what the heck the story was with this set.